In this video, I'm gonna share with you my five top tips to making your concrete project a complete success. These are strategies that we use on all our residential and commercial projects. So at the end of this video, you'll be able to assemble a project in exactly the same way that we did. Plus, once we've covered those five tips, I'm gonna give you some bonus material to make sure that you smash your project goals. Hi, I'm Toby, and this is Concrete Lab, where we share our knowledge, expertise, and experience to make sure that you can produce some amazing concrete. With so many videos on making concrete with different techniques and different methods, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to work out how you're gonna tackle a project. So in this video, we have five tips to help you make your concrete project a success. There'll be links to most of the things that we discuss in this video in the description below. And hey, when you get to the end of this video, if you like what you've heard, please give us a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference. So my first tip is to make sure that you've got a decent workspace. Now, you might have a room in your house uh, that you can make some concrete in. However, I would urge you to either do it in a garage or do it in a covered area outside if it's the right time of year, or even speak to a mate or family and find a workspace that's big enough so that you can get all the way around the piece of concrete that you are working on. And if you're using the GFRC method, for example, that you can flip it over because you'll need to do that halfway through the project so that you can process all sides. Also, generally with concrete, you need to let it dry out. So you'll need to be able to air it on all sides. Again, you need to take it from your work table or your casting table and place it on trestles or something similar. And you need at least double the space of the concrete if not much more. So make sure you've got a big enough workspace. Tip number two is tools related. A very clever person once said, don't know who that is, that the cheapest tools are the most expensive. Now, there's nothing worse than getting halfway through a project and a tool breaking, or even worse, being in the middle of pouring concrete or doing something that is time related and you've got to finish it at a certain time and a tool breaking. That can completely scupper the project. So I'm not saying go out and buy the most expensive tools, but do a bit of research first and don't buy the cheapest. Tip number three, make sure that all your mold materials are cut accurately. There's nothing worse than, and believe me, we've done it, where you get to the end of a project and you install some concrete worktops, for example, and the lip on one piece is that big, and the lip on the other piece is just a teensy bit smaller. It absolutely sticks out, and it will bug you forever. So make sure that you cut them accurately. Now, if you don't have the tools to cut them accurately, and I'm not saying that you need to go out and buy, say, a Festool, a track saw, or you need to go and buy a table saw, if you don't have the tools, find someone that does. Now, there are DIY stores out there that will have big wall saws and will be able to cut the materials for you accurately. You might pay a small cutting charge, but believe me, it's worth it in the long run might be able to uh, tap up a local joinery shop and pay them a couple of quid and get them to cut a little bit more accurately as well. There are many options, so you don't have to go and break the bank, but definitely make sure your mould materials are nice and accurate. Tip number four, if you're a noob and you've never made a piece of concrete before and you're not quite confident, then don't pick off more than you can chew. Start with a smaller project, maybe a side table, bedside table, coffee table, or something similar. You'll probably find that it's really easy. And there's loads of information out there, both on our channel and on various other channels, but definitely start small and work your way up. Tip number five, use a bag mix. Now, unless you're the type of person who wants to reinvent the wheel, then using a bag mix is definitely the way to go. Now, we do a bag mix, but there are other companies that do bag mixes as well. And by bagged mix, I mean someone who has basically taken a huge amount of materials and put them in a silo and blended them all up uh, so that everything comes out into smaller bags and they're done in batches. Now, you can be confident that the company that you are buying from has made sure that those materials are A, of excellent quality, and B, will be the same colour, and C, will be dry 
and D will be the same year in, year out from project to project. You can, of course, design your own mix. However, it's going to be a lot more expensive. And if you decide at a later date that you want to add on an extra piece of worktop to your kitchen or your kitchen island, you want to match it, then if you can't buy the same materials, for example, can't guarantee that those materials are going to produce exactly the same colour of concrete. Now, at the beginning of the video, I said I'd share with you some bonus tips to make sure that your concrete project is a complete success. So here is bonus tip number one. Do a walkthrough. This has saved us on so many occasions with both residential and commercial projects. You literally sit down and plan things out and visualize, close your eyes and visualize where you're gonna make the concrete, how are you going to get all the materials in there when you're mixing it up, when you're demolding it, flipping the concrete, when you're processing the concrete, when you're sealing the concrete. You can make sure that everything is sheeted. You can make sure that your workspace is completely prepared. Also, think about the route that you're going to have to take when you're carrying your concrete from where it's been made to its final destination. So that might be from a workshop at the bottom of the garden path, going up to the house on a nice level path, through the bifold doors into your kitchen that's ready to receive your beautiful new concrete worktops. However, that might not be exactly how it works out. You might have made your concrete in a mate's garage two miles down the road and you might have steps going up to your kitchen and there might be a dog leg going into your house. So you need to plan these things out. How are you going to get the concrete from your mate's garage? When you get there, what's the access like? Are you going to have to have staging points where you put the concrete down? Because by the way, concrete is heavy, but you need to have a think about all of these things. And even when you get into your kitchen, you might need an extra two, maybe three pairs of hands to help you lift the concrete into its final place. Bonus tip number two, get others involved. Tapping up friends and family and getting them involved is pretty much gonna double your chance of your project being a success. When Chris and I started in concrete, we literally made a concrete top for a sideboard in my house and we went on from there. But I guarantee, had we not made that concrete top with each other's help, then we probably wouldn't have started up a concrete company. And my final bonus tip is about sealing. The elephant in the room with concrete is that it's porous. So you're only ever as good as the sealer. Now, when it comes to purchasing a sealer, don't buy a cheap one. There are loads of cheap ones out there. But I guarantee you, if you go and buy a cheap one, and then you go and put a glass of red wine down on your brand new concrete top, and you have a ring mark, get rid of you are going to be gutted so buy a good quality sealer and don't let all your hard work go to waste at the very end of your project so if you want to see more videos like this please click the like button and also click the subscribe button and place a comment in the comments box below and we'll come back to you within 24 hours so for now it's goodbye and i'll see you in the next video